Today we're going to study the heresy, the false belief that Jesus teaches that we lose our salvation if we don't keep it by works. Some people base this on John chapter 15. We're going to look at it at this point. John chapter 15, beginning at verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. The figure of a vine and its branches are used by the Lord to show the source from which all Christian fruitfulness comes. As the branch gets its life from the vine, there is no such thing as a Christian life outside of Christ. In the second verse we read, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh it away. Does this not teach losing salvation? A better construction, according to the great commentator Matthew Henry, would read, Every branch that beareth not fruit in me, he taketh it away. Or every branch that does not in me bear fruit, he taketh away. It is certain that the Greek will admit to this construction. The thought is that those who live out of Christ, no matter how good their fruit, they're cast off. There are many such nominal professors. They are in Christ in name only. All such will be cast off. But every branch really in Christ will be purged, that it may bring forth more fruit. And we see this in verse 2. To abide in Christ means to live in Him. If a man abides in Christ, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Every Christian lives or abides in Christ. Hence, every Christian bears fruit. Those who bear fruit are purged, that they may bring forth more fruit. We see this in verse 2. If a man abides that as he lives, not in me, being Christ, he is cast forth as a branch, and they are burned. All Christians live or abide in Christ, hence all will be fruit bearers. The unsaved do not abide in Christ, hence they will be cast off, and terrible will be their doom. As a branch cannot bear fruit unless it abides in the vine, neither can a man bear Christian fruit unless he abides in Christ. The question is, do you live in Christ? If you do, you can bear Christian fruit. If you do not abide in Christ, you cannot bear acceptable fruit. The lesson taught is that to bear fruit acceptable to God, one must be a Christian. His life lived with Christ in God. All others who are not in Christ, who do not bear fruit in Him, will meet their final ruin. The idea of apostasy is not in this passage. Some questions that may come up concerning this that confirm this. Will any who come to Christ ever be cast out? We read in John chapter 6, verse 37, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Will any whom Christ knew as his be cast off in the last day? Matthew 7, 21, 22, and 23. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of the Father which is in heaven. Now the will of God toward the sinner was taught by the Baptist. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Notice he uses the word never here. He doesn't say, I knew you for a little bit, but you disobeyed me. I can't claim you anymore. He doesn't do that. He never knew. They were never saved. Will any who live in Christ ever die spiritually? John 11, 25 and 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. 
And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Can anything separate a Christian from Christ? Romans 8, 35-39 Who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Now in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Can a Christian ever come into condemnation? John 5, 24 Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Nowhere does Jesus teach that works are necessary for salvation, either for keeping it or for getting it in the first place. Yet for some reason, a lot of people seem to think that it would be cooler if works were required because then we feel like we're any part of it. There's an invitational song, Jesus Paid It All. That's a very true song. We don't need to do anything except accepting what he did, asking God to come into our lives, to forgive us our sins. Plan of salvation is very simple. It was always meant that way. Again, it goes back to, did the thief on the cross have to use works? The answer is no. He was promised heaven without any works.